In this video, we're going to derive the Navier-Stokes equations. Now, this is a fairly onerous task, and I don't want to get lost in the, in the mathematics that are in here. Remember, this is simply conservation of momentum in the Eulerian frame of reference that we're going to use to solve our fluid mechanics problems. It's an equation that you know very well. You've been working with Newton's second law, f equals ma, for quite some time. So let's try and get through the math and look at this uh, the physics behind this, the ideas behind here, which really are quite straightforward. So, as I said, the starting point is our Newton's second law, and in the Lagrangian frame, we're very familiar with this, ma is equal to f, it's a vector equation, so it's going to have three components in a three-dimensional system, and we can write that acceleration as the time rate of change uh, of the velocity, and of course if it's a fixed mass system, we can put the mass inside our derivative and write dmv dt is equal to the sum of the forces. And that, of course, is for our fixed mass system in the Lagrangian frame. We're now going to look at that in our Eulerian frame of reference. For a velocity vector, but first, for a velocity vector in a Cartesian coordinate system, we're going to have three components, a u component in the x direction with the i unit vector, a v component in the y direction with a j unit vector, and a w component in the z direction, where the unit vector is called j. And so, in component form, we can write it this way, where inside our acceleration term, we're taking the time derivative of the u component of the velocity, and we're looking at the forces in the x direction, or the v velocity component, and the forces in the y direction, or the w velocity component, and the forces in the z direction. We're going to look at the same control volume that we used to define to drive conservation of mass. And so it's a Cartesian control volume. It has a dimension dx in the x direction, a dimension dy in the y direction, and a dimension dz in the z direction. Our origin for deriving it is considered to be in the center of the control volume. And I'm going to call, when I move in a positive x direction, this face out here, the x plus face, because I moved in the positive x direction to get out here face is a constant x, and likewise if I move in the negative x direction I'll come to what I'll call the x minus face, and if this is in the center, the distance that I move to get to the x plus face is dx over 2, and then the distance that I move to get to the x minus face is minus dx over 2. The same thing for the y plus face and the y minus face, and for the z plus face and the z minus face. Now when we go to a control volume formulation, we have to realize that we have to think about what's coming in and out of the control volume. So our Newton's second law, expressed in words, in terms of my control volume, is that the rate of increase of momentum, mass times the velocity, mv, in the control volume, plus the rate that mass times velocity, or momentum, is carried out of the control volume, or leaves the control volume, minus the rate of that momentum is entering the control volume, is going to be equal to the sum of the forces applied to the control volume. And of course it's a vector equation, and so we can write that in component form. And in component form, instead of the velocity vector, if we're looking at the x forces in the x direction, then everywhere our momentum will be calculated using the mass times the u component of the velocity. Likewise, in the y direction, we use the sum of the forces in the y direction, and everywhere we had the velocity, we will have the v component of the velocity. And the same thing for the z direction, the w component of the velocity, and the z component of the forces applied to the control volume. 